Please take your Bibles and turn to the book of James, chapter 3, verse 13. Alfred Nobel was a Swedish physicist. In other words, he was a really smart man. He was wise in the world, he was full of knowledge, and he created dynamite. And he created dynamite for a good reason, to remove masses of rock where roads needed to be built, or where buildings needed to be built. He created dynamite for it to be a positive thing, to do something good, to help and assist in things that needed to happen for good. Well, as you know, people took his creation and used it for bad. Uh, people took his creation and did things with it to destroy. And that's not what its intent was, but nevertheless, that's what ended up happening. And, you know, so his creation caused the death of many people. And he was grieved over what he had created and what it had done. So, so this man, Alfred Nobel, put $9 million into an account, as the story goes, and he started giving out awards for things that were done to promote peace. And he called the award the Nobel Peace Prize. And this came about because what he created for good in his wisdom and knowledge was used for wrong, used to do bad. And so we're going to talk about wisdom tonight. We're going to talk about two wisdoms tonight. We could operate in both of them. One of them is not suggested and the other comes highly recommended. And so we're going to talk about the origin of wisdom, the operation of wisdom, and the outcome of wisdom tonight. There's true wisdom and there's false wisdom. And when we talk about wisdom, we're not just talking about being smart or having knowledge when we speak of wisdom. Wisdom is much more than knowledge. Wisdom is being able to use knowledge correctly. You know, there are some very brilliant, highly intelligent lawyers, doctors, CEOs whose companies and practices are very successful. And it, it took a lot of intelligence to, to cause that to happen in their practices, in their businesses. But for some, you know, the, their home life could be a wreck. They can manage a corporation but they can't seem to manage their own lives. And that's a revealing a lack of true wisdom. But there is true wisdom. There is the wisdom of God. There's the wisdom of God, and there's the wisdom of this world. And so we're going to look at the origin of these wisdoms tonight. And if you would look with me, in verse 15, we're going to look at false wisdom and its origin. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. True wisdom is from above. False wisdom is from below. You know, an, an example of a of a false wisdom, you might consider the Tower of Babel. You know, that, that thing was built pretty high. It was probably pretty impressive in some of its architecture and, and the bracing to be, to be built so high. A lot of people were probably amazed with that tower. They looked at it and looked at an intelligence that it took to build it. 
and, and they were probably overwhelmed. It was a pretty major event. But they were building it to try to survive a flood that was promised by God would never happen again. False wisdom, it's earthly, sensual, and devilish. The enemies that that come against natural wisdom being good are the world, the flesh, and the devil. I read Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 3 the other night in a message, and it it speaks of a way of life that, that we once had in the lusts of the flesh, carrying out the desires of the flesh as children of wrath. And, 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 you know, and then you would think of 1 Corinthians one twenty maybe, which says that God makes the wisdom of this world foolish. You know, there, there is some knowledge in the world that's been used for some decent things, to do some things useful and good, but most of it actually really doesn't get used. And when it does, it doesn't get used in the right way. You know, whatever man does and whatever man creates in and of itself, it's always going to have some burden to it of some kind. And, and it's going to be used in a way eventually that is not what it was intended to be. There, there's almost always a burden to anything that originates from man. It's not that way with true wisdom. So we see the originating of the wisdom of this world in verse 15. But jump with me, if you will, down to verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. There's a wisdom that is from above. You know, our our home is already above. We are citizens of heaven now. Our Father is in heaven. Our Lord and Savior is at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Our treasures are in heaven. They are accruing in heaven as we serve the Lord as we should we have been spiritually born again and the saving power came from heaven to save our lives. The Bible says for us to set our affection on heaven and not on the things of this earth. We look to heaven for the ability to carry out true wisdom in our lives. We look for the ability not to carry out things to start well, but then end in disaster, but things to start well that would end well also. The wisdom that James told us to ask for in chapter 1 is this very wisdom that we can have if we lack it. If you and I get knowledge of the Word of God, and we learn to carry it out in our lives, what we do and carry out, it's not going to backfire on us. It's not going to disappoint us. It's not going to turn out bad when we act in the wisdom of God. The Word of God is the mind of God. That is our safety and our success. Our joy in life, our privilege in life, is to be able to carry out things that start in the mind of God that He gives to us. Not to do what's in our mind apart from God. That's going to have a burden to it. That's going to turn out bad. Where wisdom originates matters. And we are going to use one of these two wisdoms in our lives. But let's not only look at where it originates from, let us consider tonight the operation 
of these wisdoms. In verse 14, first, false wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. And again, it goes down to say what what the operation of that is. This wisdom descendeth not from above. So we see the operation of false wisdoms. Wisdom that originates differently is going to operate differently. Evidence of, of operating by wrong wisdom is going to be bitterness and envying in the life and what we do. Envy and selfish ambition, the two go together. And th- these are being connected to the false wisdom, the wisdom of this world. When what we do and apply to our lives is self-seeking, it's, it's selfish, it's for self, we're operating according to the wrong wisdom. James said in the first verse of this chapter, Be not many masters. So if, if everyone wants a high position, if everyone is looking to seek for self, look, that's being influenced by selfish ambition. Ego and pride carry out and operating in our lives. That, that comes from a wisdom. That's, that's, that's in the operation of false wisdom in our lives. The wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. Proverbs chapter 6 says, The Lord hates pride. This envy, this bitter envying, glorying, all of this is signs of the wrong wisdom that we're operating in, if, if the signs show that. Strife occurs when you have two sides in opposition, one to another. False wisdom would have us try to campaign and collect people on our side against one another. We're, we're operating by losing wisdom if we're doing this. But there's also glorying that we see here. When our lives are fully submitted to God, then, then there's going to be humility in what we're doing. There's not going to be glorying. And then what else do we see here in, in verse 14? Lie not against the truth. There's a wisdom where there will be the revealing of a selfishness. There will be a, the causing of strife. And there will be celebrating oneself pridefully. And there's plenty of lying that's going to be involved in that. Be sure of that. To be deceitful in this way, that's to let the devil run our lives. There, there's no exaggerating on, on the, the terrible situation that false wisdom puts us in. We see in verse 15, it says that this wisdom is devilish. If, if we live lying to our family, lying, lying to our friends, lying to our, our fellow church members, our brothers and sisters in Christ, lying to the job, whatever it is, we're applying our lives to that which is of the devil. A, a devilish wisdom. Jesus t- told a group of people, Ye are of your father, the devil. Let us look at what we do, and it's easy to see by God's word where it originated from, whether it be above or whether it be below. But there's not only the operation of false wisdom, let's consider the operation of true wisdom as well. Verse 13, jump up there with me if you would. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. If the wisdom we're operating in is from above, it is going to be meek. 
And when people hear the word meek or meekness, I think something different comes to the mind than what it really is. Meekness is power that is under control. In true wisdom, we don't carry out selfish plans. We don't boast of self. We are meek. And if we're meek, we have the power to have control in all that we do. This is a wisdom that has power to it. Power that glorifies God. It's a power that comes from God when we operate in true wisdom. In verse 17, we see a list of things that will be happening in the operation of this wisdom. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. We're able to keep our heart clean, to keep our life clean, operating by way of true wisdom. True wisdom lives in response to the constant reminder that God is holy. Man's wisdom leads to sin, but God's wisdom, it leads to meekness. It leads to pureness in our lives. It leads to holiness. This leads to peace in our lives. To think about the effect of which wisdom we walk in. We don't walk in the wisdom of the world, but when we walk in the wisdom of the Lord, look, there is a a peace that's attached to this. There is an inner tranquility that no condition can disturb us in as far as outward circumstances determining how we're going to be. We also see another word description here for the wisdom that is from above, and that is gentle. To be spiritually gentle is to never look to cause fights. At the same time, we're going to be gentle, but we're also never going to compromise truth to keep the peace. I mean, mean, what, what is that? Think about that. Compromising truth just to keep peace. That, that, that's not the wisdom that is from above. There's another description here in verse 17 of this wisdom from above. It is easy to be entreated. Now, we don't compromise in the wisdom of God, but we can go with the flow if it's okay, if it's something that's all right. Easy to be entreated. It doesn't have to be My idea, it doesn't have to be any individual's idea, but the best idea. And we can go along with with a great idea, no matter whose it is. It's not sinful, it's right, and it glorifies God. We can go along with that. It doesn't have to be my idea or your idea, but the best idea. This wisdom from above, it's full of mercy and good fruits. We're controlled by by God's mercy whenever we're operating according to His wisdom. I thank God for His mercy. His mercy is not giving us what we do deserve. You know, I don't think we would ever ask, God give us what we deserve, because He doesn't. In His mercy, He doesn't give us what we deserve. You know, there, there's, there, there would be hell, hell for all sinners if we got what we deserve. But He is full of mercy, and we're to be that way too. We're to be controlled by the Spirit of God. And then we also see in verse 17 that we're to be without partiality. I'll go ahead and define that by the opposite of that. In, in the beginning of this book, in James chapter 1, verse 8, we, we find the opposite of what that word means. James 1, 8 says... A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. This, this phrase, without partiality here, it speaks of singleness of mind. Not wishy-washy and building all that we do on sinking sand. Singleness of mind in what we do, rather than being a double-minded man who's unstable in all of his ways. And then also we see one more, and that is without hypocrisy. When we're operating 
by man's wisdom, we hide stuff. That, that's the wisdom of this world. We, we, we hide things. Whenever we're operating according to God's wisdom, then we're open and we're honest. Let us consider the outcomes of these wisdoms for a minute tonight, though. As we look at false wisdom in verse 16, here's the outcome of the false wisdom of this world, very, very popularly used. It says, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. James couldn't see God at work, obviously in in some of the saints that he was writing to, but he saw quite the contrary. He saw an evil work. And he's explaining by this that it comes from a natural wisdom. A natural wisdom that might appear to seem good on the surface. That might even appear to have, have a good aim in what's being done. But, but, when there's, but when that's chosen over God's wisdom, and, when, and knowing the outcome of these things as we're seeing, it's an evil work. There's confusion and evil work as a result of false wisdom. Where God's wisdom is not being applied, when we think of God's wisdom and the application of it, and if it's not there, the work is going to be evil. Wrong thinking will produce wrong actions in the life. If the knowledge... That, that we are living in, that we are living by, is from the world, we're going to be applying the world to our lives. We're, we're going to be categorized as worldly. If we apply the wisdom that is from the Word of God, well, the outcome we see in verse 18 is fruit. The fruit of righteousness is going to be the outcome. Let us compare for ourselves tonight. Let us look to the Word of God and let us compare these two wisdoms that He so clearly shows and points out to us and let us decide which is better. What can be produced by us? What what can come from our mind that we can be about and do? Or what God's mind will produce through us. Which, which is better? What, what are we, what we are and what we do is going to be the result of the wisdom that we choose. Whether it be the wisdom of God or the wisdom of this world. I, uh, I was very close to a, to a young teenager and they absolutely know I love them. But there, there was a time at, at camp whenever something was done, and it, and it shouldn't have been done. It was wrong, but it, but it was just the, I would say right timing, but probably wrong timing, where it was about gotten away with, because camp was almost over, and, and I told him, you know, you you're gonna, you're just gonna have to live with that decision. And if you keep doing that, that is going to be who you are. And it comes down to just trying to take that home personally in our lives as to what wisdom we're going to operate in. A wisdom of this world that God says is foolish or the wisdom of God. What? Wisdom are we going to choose? Are we going to choose the wisdom of God or the wisdom of this world? Which is God's wisdom or it's man's wisdom? There's true wisdom or false wisdom. It's good wisdom or it's bad wisdom. For the saints written to, whichever they choose, would, be, would make all the difference in their life. They're going to be a peacemaker or they're going to be a troublemaker. There, there's going to be results from whatever wisdom we choose. You know, wisdom. When we think about wisdom, it's, it's not just knowledge. It's the ability to apply knowledge. You know, when, 
we've probably all said before, I know what I should have done, but I just didn't do it. This is what I did and said. The knowledge was there. The wisdom wasn't. It wasn't applying what we knew to do. And, and there, are, there are guidelines for two different wisdoms for this to happen in our lives. There's either going to be the wisdom of God or the wisdom of this world. How, how do we know that? Well, that's what we just covered tonight. We look in God's Word and we see the effects. We see where it originates from. We see not only the origin but we see the operation of this wisdom, and, and we see the details of that. And there's also going to be the outcome of this wisdom. So, whatever, whatever the case may be that the Lord is saying to your heart about this tonight, or my heart about this, it, it's going to be exposed in different ways what wisdom we're operating in. And so it's, it's a great self-check. It's a great thing that for, a, for every single one of us to check up on and to make sure we're operating in the wisdom of God. We're going to have a time of invitation and just a time for us to be quiet and to self-reflect on God's Word and what He says and, and how He will better our lives as a result. You know, the Word... The Word of God, it, it is profitable. It, it's God-breathed. That's why we call it the Word of God. God breathed His Word, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. In other words, it, it teaches us, and, and we're convicted by the Word. But not only that, we're not left there. We're, we're shown how to turn things around by the correction that the Word gives. But not just to stop there, but it's good for instruction in righteousness. So we turn, we're able to turn things around and we're able to move forward in instruction in righteousness and, and walk in the Word according to what God would have us to do. So let us bow to the Lord in a word of prayer. And if you're not saved tonight... What a wonderful night it would be to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I, I've read about many services and, and many things from years past, 30, 40, 50 years past. And the gospel message might not have even been presented in the service. And people knew, people knew they needed to be saved and people knew what the gospel was. Many, many don't know what the gospel is today. Many don't know what it takes to be right with God. But it's simply understanding and believing that God sent His Son to this earth as a substitution for us, not only in death, but in life. Romans 5.11 says we'll, we, we shall be saved by His life. He offered His perfect life in our place. You know, that what He did on the cross for us wouldn't matter if, if He hadn't given a perfect life, lived for us first. And then He took it to the cross and He died in our place. Why did Jesus die? Well, because the penalty of sin is death. And that was for all of us. That was for all mankind. So God became a man for us to do that in our place because of His love for us. And it satisfied His holiness, though, because He lived the perfect life and He satisfied the justice of God for us in dying for us. And He was buried and He was raised again. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can, we can look at that and see that God was pleased with the sacrifice that His Son made for us in our place. And the Bible says, if you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Understanding you're a sinner and that Jesus died for our sins and that if you trust Him, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Let us pray. Father, we do...
bow before you in your house tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your truth. Lord God, we consider the life that we live. I consider someone that I'm mindful of tonight that said toward the end of their lives, what kind of life was I supposed to live? I thank you for your word. I thank you that it's a blueprint for our lives in such a way that we can live a life that will honor and glorify you. I thank you for instruction. I thank you, Lord, that as we consider what we apply to our lives, the thinking process and the knowledge and applying to our lives, sometimes someone can think it's, it's okay and it's all wrong. I thank you for wisdom that is from above. I thank you for how it manifests itself in our lives. And I thank you for the promise of the result of it. Lord, may we live our lives in the wisdom of God that we might please you, that you might even break forth in singing over our lives when we obey you and when we live according to your truth. Lord God, if there's someone here tonight who has not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, they have never trusted Jesus to save them. We pray that they would be saved tonight. And we ask all of these things in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. If everyone could please stand.